All right. Uh, good afternoon and welcome to the Friday virtual lecture uh, from Moses Kotan Institute. I'm Zama Kamini. And uh, I will continue with the Cybersecurity Awareness Month of virtual lectures. And today we have yet another uh, cybersecurity expert from Poland Security. Her name is Azanel Lengwane, a graduate from DUT. And also she is working at Poland Security as what we call a stock manager, which is uh, yes. <laughs> <laughs> uh, she started there um, around about 2014. And it is great to have these kind of people who are young and uh, joining the field. And we are happy that uh, she's going to talk to us today, taking us through what we call the threat intelligence. And then we will have questions later. Over to you, Ms. Mugwane. Thank you so much, Zama. Um, firstly, I would like to say thank you to the Moses Kodani Institute for the platform, as well as for the opportunity to present um, this groundbreaking technology that we are currently using for, um, for security purposes. So um, I'm just going to take you through a brief um, introduction into what we call video threat intelligence. Yeah. So, for a very long time, we had this notion that security meant that we are supposed to have physical human security guards, making sure that people, assets, and, and property are safe. But recently that has changed drastically. So um, the history of security goes back centuries ago, where you found that emperors had physical security guards that were there for their personal and for their property protection. Um, from then on, physical security guards have been the main focus of keeping people, property, as well as assets safe. So, even now in this day and age, we still have physical security guards that are there and they still play a special role in security. However, many of today's threats are unknown and they require advanced technology as well as skilled people who can be able to manage those risks as well as well-implemented processes working together to protect people as well as to protect assets and if we have gaps in any of these three controls, it is vital that we seek help um, from qualified service providers like Borderline Security. So um, we no longer just rely on physical security on the ground, but we also have shifted in also relying in um, technology and its continued advancements to assist us um, in basically making the world a safe place in order to live, to work, and to play. So that is like basically the history behind security. So as we have noticed, CCTV or closed circuits, um, circuit television goes back over a century ago and it has been progressing since then to, um, to accommodate or to keep up with the technology advancement as well as the needs from the organizations or of people in, in general. Now, I will not go into detail as to what technology was introduced in which year, 
But because I don't want to make this a history a history lesson, I just want to um, take you through what we have now or what we have developed in order to assist us in dealing um, in dealing with security and what we have now and what we and, and what is work, currently working now. And this technology is so impressive that it is groundbreaking and it's also basically assisting us with keeping track of security measures. So basically we are going to be discussing intelligent video surveillance and how this technology can enhance the way we monitor and ultimately make this world a better um, or safer place to live, work and play. So I am just going to take through you as well as what is video, um, intelligent video surveillance. As you might have noticed that physical security is not just physical security guards, but it also includes and is not limited to fencing. So we all know that in order to keep our building safe, we need to make sure that there's um, the proper fencing, as well as we can also have dogs or alarm systems, as well as boom gates that can secure um, secure our premises, as well as having making sure that our doors are safe and they are secure. But we all know that it has, that has never been enough since we have always been able to have criminals that are able to bypass all of these with ease. So we've heard of cases where criminals are able to escape from maximum um, security prison facilities. So basically, um, it tells us that physical security is no longer enough and it has not been enough for a very long time. Now to combat that, we need to make sure that we advance ourselves with technology in order to keep in order to keep us safe. Now, criminals use technology to commit crimes against organizations or of people in general. And as a result, it is important that um, systems are more intelligent than criminals and are developed um, in order to safeguard the people, assets, as well as property which is why um, we now have intelligent video surveillance. So we now need to discuss how um, intelligent video um, surveillance can be able to assist us in order to keep our property safe, to keep ourselves safe, as well as to keep um, our assets safe. Now, um, Intelligent Video Surveillance, or IVS for short, refers to those systems that take advantage of um, features offered by advanced hardware and software for the detection and analysis of images, with features based on new um, technologies as well as um, connectivity being the main um, characteristics. Now, in um, traditional video surveillance, we we know that um, the human factor was essential for an adequate analysis of images, and videos offered um, by the system to the point that um, several people were needed in order to be able to monitor those videos or in order to um to to work in several shifts in order to perform that work but with ivs it is easier to detect criminal activities and it also needs less people in order to monitor it because of the system being so powerful and being so advanced so um with ivs we are able to um, detect criminal activities as it happens before it happens or, or even after it happens because it makes it easier to go back and be able to sift through the videos. So IVS is basically the solution of being proactive in the security industry. It has functions that will allow you to detect suspicious 
all criminal activities in real time, giving you a chance to report on those criminal activities before they even um, happen. So should you be required to view footage, you will no longer have to sit for hours sifting through loads of images as well as video because you have an, a system that will allow you to punch in a time, a date, as well as the location of the required fo um, footage. So that is, is going to save you time. It, it, it's not like the, 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 the um, traditional video surveillance that was used before. So the quality of the videos and images is also amazing, so amazing that you, you can even see the brand of clothing that a person is wearing or detect the color of a vehicle um, that you are searching for. So I would have liked uh, for us to be able to see the kind of images that we are currently um, viewing regarding um, video surveillance, but because of security reasons, we are uh, unable to do so. So we now need to um, discuss how IVS can help an organization. So firstly, um, intelligent video analysis facilitates the processing of um, both real-time and recorded video, um, video and detects any kind of criminal activity that could be um, deemed as suspicious. So in addition to distinguishing people from all objects and um, even differ differentiate differentiating behavioral patterns. So these are the main um, these are the main advantages related to IVS that can help an organization. So okay, so improved efficiency. So that means a IVS can record it can store a larger volume of videos um, than traditional systems. But not only that, the quality of the images is so much higher. Uh, it, it's, it's called high definition. So on the other hand, unlike what happens with um, under human supervision, the system will not suffer from, what, um, from fatigue or similar um, issues. So that means the system does not tire out like, any, uh, like a human being would um, tire. So that means um, it will not suffer from fatigue, it will not be sleepy, um, it, it's also um, high performing. So another, um, another advantage of IVS is that it's um, increased in cost effectiveness. So even though the cost of the investment might be higher than that of traditional video surveillance, IVS is more cost effective in the short term since they need less physical infrastructure. So that means we, do, as much as we might rely, we, we might rely on um, physical guards, but we don't really need to have physical guards because this system is able to assist us in keeping um, an organization safe. Once installations are done, the only part that is left is monitoring as well as maintenance. Should it be needed or should it be required? Now, it can also, another advantage which is more interesting is remote monitoring. Now, this is where it gets interesting. So with IVS, you don't need to monitor from the site that you are monitoring. So a company like um, Boland Security will do cabling for you. It will install the cameras, it will configure the cameras and monitor the cameras for you. So you don't need to, um, these cameras can be um, monitored remotely. So you don't need to be on the site where you have installed the cameras in order to monitor the cameras. So they ultimately offer and manage service of the entire um, system from start to finish. 
So all that is needed is an internet connection to access the images and data provided by the system. Both live and recorded images can be accessed um, from multiple devices. So that means you can do monitoring from your laptop, you can do monitoring for you from your cell phone, as long as you have the system installed in any of those, those devices, it, sh it shouldn't be hard. So the video surveillance cameras can be used for, uh, for, for things that are um, something other than surveillance, such as detecting behavioral patterns of employees or consumers in a department store or even in, an, in a campus environment, which is what phone and security is currently involved in. Now, when it comes to monitoring, phone and security has created what we call a SOC. Now, a SOC is um, a security operations center. So a SOC is a facility that houses an information security system responsible for monitoring. So um, we are responsible for monitoring as well as analyzing an organization security posture on an ongoing basis. So we don't only do monitoring of the cameras. We also have to analyze whatever information that the cameras are giving to us, analyze that information and send it through to our clients. So um, we are able to detect, analyze and respond to um, video security incidences in real time by using technology and a strong set of, set of um, processes. So we always need to make sure that we have a response plan in order to be able to be effective. So the SOC is staffed with um, professionals to oversee all SOC um, operations. So the SOC team works closely with other teams to ensure that any issues are dealt with quickly and efficiently. So that means we are not only dependent on the F uh, on the professionals that are currently in the SOC, but we are also um, working with the team that is on the ground in order for us to be able to report on incidences efficiently. So we also have what we call smart alarms. So smart alarms um, is mostly the most imp important and the most interesting part of IVS. So these smart alarms will be able to detect human behavior. It is also um, able to detect criminal activities. So remember when I mentioned the configuration part of the system? Well, that is how smart alarms are generated on the system. So the client will basically tell us which function or which intelligent function they want the camera to perform, what time it should be, perform and um, the location of, or, or, of um, the, 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 the intelligent function. So this is also where artificial intelligence, also known as AI, kicks in. So the camera that the cameras that are being used in order to operate the IVS are intelligent cameras. So they can detect human behavior they are also able to detect objects from humans, which means they can be able to detect a car from a person. They can also be able to single out criminals that have been blacklisted previously um, from a huge crowd of people. So there could be a gathering of about 10,000 people and the camera will be able to single out a person that has committed a crime against that organization or as soon as that person enters the premises, they'll be able to be de detected. So these are just a few examples of um, the intelligent functions that we um, currently have, or that we are currently using in order to support the system. So we have an intrusion function, we have a tripwire, we have a fast movement detection, we have a face detection, we have a face match, we have an object removed um, alarm. We also have you know, an abandoned object. So the, these are just some of the examples that we currently have when it comes to functions um, or intelligent functions that are used by the IVS. So I am now showing you the types of cameras that we are currently using in order to be able to perform 
or to, to assist the IVS in performing efficiently. So these are some of the cameras. We've got a PTZ camera, which is able to rotate in a 360 um, dimension. We have a bullet camera and we have a dome camera. So um, Bowline has partnered up with um, service providers that are able to install, configure and, and, and um, assist us with um, monitoring remotely. So these are just the typical examples of um, the cameras that we are currently using. So these are the, um, the intelligent cameras that we are currently using. Now we also have a dome camera. A dome camera is installed mainly inside an office or inside a house. Um, the bullet camera can be installed on, a, on an outside area. So it can be an area that is facing cars that are coming in to premises or even people that are in a mall or which, whichever case you'd like it to, um, to be installed. And then a PTZ can also be um, installed outside. Now, the nice thing about the PTZ is that it can rotate in a 360 direction. So you, you, you are able to have a broader view of the location or your premises. Now, um, I'd also like to say, well, I don't really have a conclusion, but with regards to this system, it gives us a broader view of what intelligent um, functions we can have in an intelligent system. So the future is now, the future is tomorrow, and the future is IVS in the security industry. So that is basically what IVS is. All right. Thank you, Zama. Uh, well, 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 thank you very much, uh, Ms. Ngwane. Uh, that was a great presentation, and uh, I think I, I learned some of uh, um, what we call some terminology. I'm not too good up with the video intelligent on how it works and also mm -hmm. how everything works. If you have questions, everyone, you can just uh, write them on the comment line. Uh, but so from my side, Ms. Ngwane, I wanted to find out. You mentioned yes. that uh, I, uh, it can um, detect some or uh, it has some functionalities that yes. one can use within an organization. And mm -hmm. at your uh, at your office uh, as a soft manager, mm -hmm. is it possible for the system to detect the most wanted criminals? For instance, yes, it is. Okay. It is possible. Yes. And then at what level, international wanted criminal, or are we looking at a national wanted criminal, or, or just an organization wide? As you said, um, if they have attacked that organization at a specific point in time. Yeah, it, 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 it's, it's possible to, to, to um, detect criminals even on an international level, depending on whether we have information of that criminal. We'd have to have either the face of the criminal, where, um, the details of the criminal, and once we have those details, we um, configure them into our camera system, or we configure them into the IVS, and be able to blacklist that face. So as soon as that person walks into the um, organization, we are able to detect them. Oh, so and send an alert to the police, yes. Okay, now I get you. So it's a matter of pre- uh, or proactively identifying that specific criminal and also right. configuring uh, the the system for that specific organization you're working with so that yes. it is able to identify those faces and also it is able to make sure that um, it's easy for them to be detected when they come right. in. Yes, yes, that's, that, that's basically what, what happens, yes. Okay, and then maybe another one that I might have from a side, it is looking at specifically uh, the unrest that we had experienced in a few months back. Should an organization or a shop, should they have had such a video intelligence? How will they, uh, they have benefited from it? Okay, so um, with regards to a shop or an organization that or that had previously or was prone to being attacked, 
by um, by the looting, it would have been easy to detect um, that amount of um, security risk before it could actually happen. Because remember, with these cameras, we are able to set. Um, Zama, are you still there? Yes, I'm still here. Oh, okay, right. No, um, I, I was just looking at the the the. the your your camera has stopped. Actually, it's it, it, it's frozen. But as long as you can still hear me, though. Yeah, I can still hear you clearly. Okay. Okay, so remember, like I told you, that we have examples of intelligent functions that the cameras can perform. So if you have an intelligent function like the, the tripwire, as soon as a person enters or is goes beyond a boundary or a perimeter that has been set on that, uh, or on that camera or on the premises, the, the, um, an, uh, a place like the stock will be able to receive a notification or an alarm and then we can be able to then notify the client or notify our customers to say hey there are people that are now crossing the boundary that you have set to say that you you don't allow people um over this boundary at a certain time so it would have been very easy for them to detect the the the, the, the danger or or um be able to 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 report on it as well before it could actually happen. All right, I yes. get. It. And then you also mentioned. Um, I think uh, you said it proactively detects uh, mm -hmm. anything that has to do with uh, the mal or the the anomalies of the yes. building where the where your clients are sitting. But in your experience, uh, Ms. Ngwene, would you say that uh, after you have worked that, I think you have wasted so many uh, clients without indulging much on their private information, would you say that um, there are some pre-requirements that are needed for this uh, system to work, pro I mean, to work properly? For instance, are there certain policies that an organization need to have in place? Are there certain um, procedures that uh, need to be in place as well? And also, do you have some sort of uh, a guidelines to maintain and to ensure that the system is sustainable and it is working properly? Um, yes, Zama. In order for us or in order for the system to perform, we need to get a directive from the company or our clients or our customers. So the, 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 the client will not perform by itself. It needs to be told what to do. So like I mentioned that we do have intelligent functions or intelligent alarms. Now those intelligent alarms we get from the client. So if a client says that after half past four on a certain office building, they don't want to see anyone in there and um, we need to set an alarm for that place, then we will set that alarm for that place for that specified time. And then they will say maybe during business hours, you can disable that alarm because there's a lot of movement in and out of the building. Because remember, if there is movement in a building where you have set up an, an intelligent function, we will keep on getting um, alarms that are coming in. So we have to report on those alarms every time they come in. So instead of having those um, alarms being um, configured for maybe like during the day or during office hours, the clients will specifically tell us that from this time to this time, there should not be any anyone or any movement inside the building. As well as having policies like you have mentioned, the client will tell us what their security is supposed to be like or their security detail. So we just need to make sure that we monitor movements or we monitor any abnormalities that happen in, in, in the client's premises. And also in order to for the system to perform, we need to make sure that the soft operators are trained in order to be able to monitor the system as well as report on whatever incidences that we um, that you might um, 
that we, that we might be able to view. So, so we also need to make sure that we have a, a technical team on the ground that is able to assist us in uh, maintaining our um, our equipment. So that will be maintaining our cameras as well as a cabling uh, a cabling issue, for instance. So if it happens that we have a cabling issue, we need to make sure that is that um, that issue is maintained. All oh, right. No, thank yeah. you very much. Maybe the last one will be on in terms of I, as your customer, uh, am I able to monitor all that using my cell phone and wherever I am, just to yes. see what, which activities are happening within my vicinity? Yes, yes, it, it, it's, it's only right that we can give you access because remember, you are paying us to give you a service. Mm -hmm. So in order for you to trust us or to, to trust the way that we operate, we, we are able to give you access into the system. So you, you, the, the system can be monitored from your phone or it can be monitored from your laptop or even your computer at home or wherever it is that you want to monitor from. Just as long as it's compatible with that laptop or that phone. Okay, no, thank yes. you. Thank you so much. Thanks again, Ms. Mwane. It was a great lecture and uh, uh, enjoy the discussions that we just had now. Thank you very much, ladies and gentlemen. This is taking us to the end of our lecture for today. Remember to join us again next week, Friday. We will be having Ms. Carl Ace, who will be speaking about uh, um, the integration of the cyber space together with the physical security. So in other words, how do you balance the two? Nearly the same what Ms. Ngwane discussed today, but he will be focusing in the overall information security. Thank you again. Uh, we'll see you next week. Enjoy. Bye. Thank you so much, Dama. Goodbye. Bye.